Well, hello and welcome to Understand Men Now. I'm Jonathan Asley of jonathanasley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, the one skill, the one skill that instantly improves your relationship. All right, really quickly before we get started today, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified of new content. I shoot about three videos a week, plus I do a live now once a week on Fridays. All right, uh, depending on what time zone you're in. <laughs> Friday's here in Los Angeles, California. Okay, we're gonna talk about that one skill that instantly improves your relationship. So what I've observed over the years is that, you know, there's this fantasy that most, and I'm gonna be a judgment here, most women adopt, that every relationship should just be perfect, that if you love each other, everything will just be perfect and everything will magically work out because that's what does love does. That makes everything magical, right? And while I certainly appreciate and uh, appreciate what love does, love is that, that glue that bonds us together, that makes us go, I want to be a better man. I want to be a better person in relationship. That is certainly true. But the reality is, is most people are unskilled at being in relationship. And even worse, most people aren't even familiar with the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship. And that's partly because they haven't done the inner work to be prepared for a relationship. And that's why they're lacking this one skill. This is one of the reasons why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? There's the back. Uh, there's a link below to get a copy of my book. The book is a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, and why I repeat myself over and over and over and over and over again in all my videos about the importance of doing personal development, self-help, and spiritual work is that it helps in the processing of being less judgmental. It helps in the processing of being less, making comparisons for, for yourself and others. It helps significantly in the self-condemnation that most human beings have for oneself. I mean, we humans oftentimes can crucify ourselves, and that's me being on the cross, right? We can crucify ourselves with inner language that can be so unhealthy for a relationship. And this is one of the reasons why most people haven't adopted this important skill that absolutely improves relationships very quickly. Now, if you're not familiar with the work of the book by Marshall Rosenberg, Nonviolent Communication, Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg, I wished he titled this Compassionate Communication. Because what I'm about to lean into right now is so significantly important at understanding compassionate communication. And this one skill that's lacking in both men and women alike, this one skill is conflict resolution skills. Let me repeat that, conflict resolution skills. Now, what does that look like? What does conflict resolution skills look like? So I want you to imagine that, you know, we have this fantasy, relationships should just be so perfect, but oftentimes there is friction. There's going to be differences. And this is significantly true for those of us in midlife. If you're after baby making years or before retirement, that's the demographic I speak to. We come to the table with a lot of luggage. So to actually intertwine with another person can be kind of rough if you haven't learned good conflict resolution skills, okay? This is why in the book by uh, Dr. John and Julie Gottman, uh, in the book, Eight Dates, this teaches you how the mechanics of a healthy, happy relationship. But chapter, oops, I'm gonna turn my page. Chapter two is called Agree to Disagree, Addressing Conflicts. So first, it's learning how to address conflict. So I'm gonna teach you the way I approach this. And first off, when you're having a difference with your partner, what's most important is that you hear, you listen to your partner's point of view, you then accept their point of view, even if you disagree, but it's important to accept their point of view, acknowledge their point of view, and then share your point of view on what's going on. So it's listening, and accepting. Not accepting that you're agreeing with it, but at least you're validating their point of view. Now, if both people aren't going to do this, this is gonna be very problematic. However, here's the thing, ladies. 
lead by example because after a little while, if you're with the right guy, he's gonna start adopting your communication style. It's natural when emotionally mature people are entering into relationship to start to improve themselves, improve themselves, but one has to lead. Now, I know this sucks. I know you don't like the idea of you having to be the leader in this regard. Wouldn't it be great if everybody came fully trained? But I'll be candid with you. Women are just as weak as this skill as men. I'm a single man out there, and I can tell you women are horrible at this. So, and, and I know this even from talking to my clients. This is why I'm such a big proponent of teaching you how to vet for emotionally available men, vetting. In fact, that's what my whole coaching program is all about, is helping you identify the right man and learn how to vet them. And if you're not, if you need some support on that, check out the link to a free discovery call to see if working with a coach is right for you. Because if you want to improve your odds of being in the right relationship, let me teach you how to vet for emotionally available men. Because emotionally available men are already going to be somewhat trained in this area of listening and accepting your point of view and vice versa, because it's not about being right, it's about choosing to be happy. Let me repeat that. It's not about being right, it's about choosing to be happy. And how one does that is it's not about you winning an argument, it's about how can we come together as a team. Being happy is saying, how can we resolve this as a team? Because the reality is, is here's the thing, if your relationship has five good things in one conflict, you're in great shape. And what I mean by conflict is some friction, okay? But if you only have two good things and five friction, that's gonna be problematic. This is why adopting and learning these skills is going to instantly increase, improve your relationship. And if it doesn't, chances are you're not with the right person. Because as I wrote in my book, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. So that's my invitation to you. Learn good communication skills. Read the books I recommend. They're going to make a big difference in your life. Okay, now I'm sure you have something to say about this. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your questions on this. Um, if you like these videos, let me know. I really appreciate the feedback. All right, I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, I'm gonna give myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the microphone or the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone or a pet or a teddy bear or a pillow and give it a hug of love because everyone deserves love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye-bye now.